Hey guys, so I'm going to be doing a review real quick here on the Galaxy Z Flip. Uh, I'm going to go over its specs, I'm going to go over what I like about it, what I don't like, some things I think they could have improved on, and then I'm going to give it an overall review rating out of uh, out of 10, just a 1 to 10 number. Um, I'm going to keep it pretty quick, um, but I'm going to go over all the stuff that I think might be important to you guys. So first of all, its specifications, we got, I'll start off folded, it's going to be 87.4 millimeters long. 73.6 millimeters wide and 17.3 millimeters thick. Um, when you unfold it, it is 167.3 millimeters long, again 73.6 wide and 7.2 millimeters thick. Uh, it weighs about 6.5 ounces, 6.46 to be exact. Um, the back is a Gorilla Glass 6 with an aluminum frame on it. Uh, the front for the actual screen is a plastic-like material. Uh, it supports a nano sim or an e sim. Uh, the display on it is called a foldable dynamic AMOLED HDR10 Plus display. It's 6.7 inches corner to corner. Uh, it has a resolution of 1080 by 2636 pixels. And the cover display, which is this little thing right here, uh, is a Super AMO LED 1.1 inch 112 by 300 pixel display. Uh, for the OS, it is an Android, so it runs Android 10 or One UI 2.5. Uh, the chipset in it is a Qualcomm SM8150 Snapdragon 855 Plus. Uh, the CPU is an octa-core 2.95 GHz Cryo 485. And the GPU is an Adreno 640 um, that runs at 700 MHz. The memory, it comes stock with an internal 256 gigs of memory, 8 gigs of RAM. Uh, it does not have an SD card slot. Uh, it does have plenty of memory in it, but for any photographers or videographers out there, or just anybody who really likes to take pictures and videos, you may want to think a little bit about that if you're going to use more than that, which most people don't. Uh, the main camera on it, which would be this camera right here, it turns into the back camera when you do unfold the phone, uh, is a dual 12 megapixel uh, 27 millimeter wide lens um, and then the selfie camera on the inside is a 10 megapixel wide lens. Uh, they feature LED flash, HDR, panorama and then the selfie camera just features HDR and the back display camera does 4K video at 60 or 30 frames per second, uh, 1080p at 60 or 240, and then 720p at 960 frames per second. Uh, the front camera, which is the selfie camera, does 4K at 30 frames per second. It does have a speaker. It's right here on the bottom, in this bottom corner. Um, it does not have a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, so no aux cords. Those have been gone for a minute and it runs at 384 kilohertz audio. It's tuned by AKG, good company, I like their stuff. Um, it runs dual band Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi Direct, Hotspot, Bluetooth 5.0, uh, it does have GPS, as most things do. It has an NFC tag so it can do the wireless scanning. Uh, it does not have a radio adapter so you can't get like the radio app and play radio just over the phone without using an internet, and it does run the USB-C 3.1 for the charge port. Um, as far as features, it has a side-mounted fingerprint reader, an accelerometer, a gyroscope sensor, proximity sensor, compass, barometer. Uh, the battery is a 3300 milliamp non-removable battery, has fast charging for 15 watts through the USB Type-C, and fast wireless charging as well. Comes in mirror black, mirror purple, mirror gold, and then the Tom Brown edition. Uh, I have the mirror black here. Uh, it looks black, could be considered a little bit of a blue color because of the mirror on it. Uh, the price is coming in at about 800 now. The original MSRP was 14. They've since lowered it a little bit. Um, just there wasn't a demand as much as they thought there were going to be. I would assume. Um, as far as looks go, I think it looks sleek. Uh, it's not too thick as some people might be concerned about with a phone that folds over. Although I think I would have liked to see a slightly more aggressive rear camera design. Uh, it's just a personal preference. Um, it reminds me of the J series and I think that they could have come up with a slightly more unique design that looked just a little bit nicer on this. Um, 
if I were in charge of designing it, I would have made it ever so slightly wider and then a little bit shorter. Uh, I have pretty big hands, but as you can see, top to bottom, I do have to move my hands, especially corner to corner. Uh, and some people with smaller hands might have a little bit of issues with that. Um, the hinge, uh, like I just demonstrated, is I, I think it's 10 out of 10. Um, as far as this phase of foldable phones that we're at right now, they haven't made a lot of them. Uh, it feels very tight, durable. Uh, it's got just the right amount of tension. It does the um, the stand up. You can put it at just about any angle, right at about here. It wants to fall down. Um, there you're fine, there you're fine. You can even go down to here uh, and here. Uh, I think it's a good amount of tension when you do open it all the way up. Um, it does snap a little bit more into place, uh, so it's a little bit harder to get out of there. And that keeps it from folding in on you. Um, the screen for the interior screen uh, doesn't quite feel like glass. Uh, you can tell that it's not true glass, but it's not super plasticky either, which I was it was something I was uh, concerned about initially. Um, the bezels around the edges, even though they do look a little bit odd, I think it's just a personal preference for me, uh, especially with us being used to the infinity screens now. Um, it does provide a little bit of protection, which I like, especially with how not durable these phones are. Um, it has very smooth transmissions or transitions, sorry, and movement. Um, very, very smooth. I set this up, but I haven't really done anything. I haven't set it up for me yet. Um, the camera's decent. And it's very responsive. I'd say it's more than good enough for average users. Um, I'm gonna. There should be some camera images overlaid on your display there. Uh, these are some pictures that I took. Um, you can see I need to clean my keyboard. Um, so I would say that it's decent, uh, more than good enough for average users. Um, it's easy enough to unfold and fold again with one hand. Uh, it takes some getting used to. I wouldn't recommend trying it right off the bat. I'm fairly used to a foldable phone, so this wasn't a big deal for me. Um, it's a little bit slippery. Uh, it's just by design, the way these are made, they're very sleek. They're expected to be a little bit slippery, so it's not a big thing for me, but beware of that. Uh, the big thing with them, though, is they're not durable. Um, they are very easy to break. It even comes with a warning in the box that says, don't, you know, don't get it wet, don't push it hard on the interior screen because it's not glass. It will mess up the display underneath. Um, it's not water resistant or waterproof at all, nor is it dust proof or dust resistant. Uh, so try to keep it clean. Don't be sticking it in your pockets with all the pocket lint. Um, I mean, not that you can't put it in your pocket, but you know, don't rub it around in the sand or the dirt or anything like that either. It's gonna mess it up. It's gonna get inside this hinge in here and you're gonna have all kinds of issues. Um, I believe Samsung does offer one replacement for a discounted rate uh, for the interior screen if you do break it. I don't know the exact price on that, so I'm not going to try to quote, um, but I know they do they do discount one of the replacements. Um, I do have to say it does have a lack of quality case options for it. Uh, not that that's actually something about the phone itself. I get that that's third party manufacturers making those cases. However, if you're looking for a case or for a phone that you can put a nice big durable case on, this might not be the way to go. Uh, my overall review is about a 7 out of 10. My likes are that it's pretty much unnoticeable in your pocket. Uh, it's especially going to be good for girls um, because they tend to have smaller pockets in their pants. Uh, it's a lot smaller. It's not too thick at all, honestly, and uh, I, I didn't even notice it in my pocket when I put it in there. Now, granted, I'm quite I'm used to quite a big phone, uh, so this is this is pretty small. It feels nice, quality made. Um, everything about it feels high quality. Nothing feels cheap. Um, it has a very unique design. You are going to get exactly what they were going for, which is that uh, elite feel uh, that nobody else has it type thing. Uh, you're gonna everybody's gonna pay attention to it when you get it out. Uh, it's very snappy. It feels like a flagship phone, which is exactly what it is. The interior or the internals of this phone are flagship. Um, the front screen does include touch, touch actions and a camera preview as well. So you can swipe up and down and touch and it does some things. I don't have a SIM card in here, so that's all it's going to tell me now. Uh, but if I open up the camera, I can turn this on. And I don't know if you can see here, you should have a little bit of a preview. Um, 
the things that I dislike, the price, first of all, uh, if you're going to go buy MSRP, you are looking at $1,400. Uh, I looked, did a little bit of research online. There's still quite a few retailers that sell them for that, uh, although the average is between 800 and 1,000, which isn't super high for phones, but especially that 1,400, if that's what we're gonna assume, that's a lot. Um, and it's not necessarily a bad thing. It is supposed to be a nice foldable phone. It's elite, it's expensive, that's fine. But for some people that could be something and I wouldn't wanna pay $1,400 for a phone if I didn't have to. Uh, I would have liked to see a small amount of dust or water resistance included. I get that that's hard to do, or if not this one, maybe the next one that they could do that with. Um, I know that's challenging and I'm not knocking on them at all for that, but it's just something that would have been nice. It would have feel, made me feel a little bit more comfortable with the phone. Um, so I wasn't so worried about, you know, if I take it in the bathroom with me when I get in the shower, is it is the water, the moisture going to mess it up? Am I going to come back out and my phone's going to be gone? Um, I think they could have made the front display just a little bit larger, you know, so they could have done something with it. That, that little camera um, preview is cool and all, but if you're standing back to take, get a picture taken, that's not going to show you really anything, um, as well as they could have added a few more features on it if they did that. Um, maybe again, for the next model, they could do something like that. Uh, a dislike, I guess I'll call it that, is just a lack of a high quality camera rules out the photographer audience, uh, especially at the price point that the phone's at. You can go up to the Note 20 Ultra, which is going to um, just overlap this many times with the, the quality camera that's on that one. Um, my last, which is really the only big dislike about the phone, is it's too tall it's just it's slightly awkward almost especially if you have small hands and i understand that a lot of people don't have as big of hands as i do um there it, it's just it's too tall um makes it a little bit awkward to get to this last this corner up here if you're holding in this hand this corner you're just kind of like this and with a phone that folds and it's fragile you don't want you don't want to drop it when it's open right because it, it could make mess up that hinge and then you're going to break your phone uh, it just makes me feel unsafe going over here um that's really my only big complaint with it. Uh, and then the last one is just, as you can see, just from me doing this review, it is a fingerprint magnet. It's that mirrored finish on the back. Every fingerprint you touch, it picks up, especially with the foldable phone. You have a lot more access to that back camera. You know, you grab it out of your pocket. Now you got fingerprints on your camera. You got to wipe it off on your shirt before you take a picture of anything, which depending on the shirt material could leave micro scratches on your camera lens. Um, that's pretty much all I have for this. I like it in general. Um, I don't know that I would purchase it. I got it sent to me uh, free. So it's not something that I would um, necessarily buy, although I do think it's a really cool phone. It's a really cool design. And I do hope they keep doing it and keep improving on it because, uh, you know, the other foldable phone out right now is the Galaxy Fold. Um, and then it's, it's at least from Samsung. Uh, and you know, not everybody wants a giant tablet when you unfold it, but I think this is a really neat concept. I think they should keep doing it, keep improving on it. Um, I definitely, I would use this as a phone. I don't know that I would necessarily buy it, but that's just a me preference. Uh, I do have the Galaxy Fold right now and I love it. I love it to death, but uh, I like the, the bigger tablet feel for a foldable phone, that's kind of what I wanted in it. But for somebody that wants to go smaller and then have a normal size phone, this is definitely a great option. Um, uh, I really don't have many dislikes or complaints about it. Just the uh, little bit of sizing issue um, and just it's really fragile. Um, but that is just inherent with foldable phones right now. And I'm sure that that'll get better as time goes on. So that's all for this video. If you guys have any other ideas for videos that you want, um, I let me know in the comments. I can try to make some of those. Uh, if you want to see a video comparing the Fold and the Z Flip, I can do that. I have the Fold too. Uh, and if you want to see uh, maybe a Note 20 Ultra video, I could do that as well. Um, just let me know what you guys want or like in the comments. If you have any other questions or anything like that, let me know as well. See you next time.